Hi everyone and good afternoon. I am Nathan Season, the coordinator of the FEU Career and Placement Office. Welcome to another round of PEP Talk, the pre-employment preparation talk webinar series. This is our 12th episode. PEP Talk is a regular virtual series designed to prepare the graduating students for employment by equipping them with the necessary knowledge through talks touching on various topics delivered by industry professionals and experts. And on your screens now, you can see our previous pep talk webinars. You may rewatch them on your most convenient time at the Career and Placement official Facebook page. Today's webinar is being live streamed via Microsoft Teams. We are also live via FEU and the Capo official Facebook pages. To participate later in our question and answer part, you may submit your questions and comments anytime at our conversation page, which can be found at the right side of your screen if you're using a desktop or at the live Q&A tab if you're using a mobile phone or other portable device. For our viewers watching through the FEU Facebook live streaming, you may also post your questions on the comment section as well. The longevity of the pandemic is uncertain, and with that, companies have adjusted their recruitment processes. Likewise, it is also believed that the way we search for work online has also changed. That is why we will be having another episode which will help guide you in preparing and navigating your way through the digital landscape to effectively land a job despite our current situation. That is why for our PEP Talk 12, our topic is Career Prep 101 and successfully finding a career in the digital landscape. So please stick with us until the end of the program because you will surely learn a lot. And by the way, I just would like to remind everyone to please make sure that your microphones are on mute, especially during the lecture proper to avoid causing any unnecessary noise. Thank you for your cooperation and enjoy the rest of the program. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, may I call on the Director of the Career and Placement Office to give her opening remarks. Please let us all welcome Ms. Maria Carmencita Babe Suva Alfonso. Ma'am, the screen is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much, Renitan. Um, our distinguished speaker, our Vice President, Joven Castro, deans, faculty members, students, and co-employees, good afternoon and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. The recent academic year has showed us a preview of how things will be even after the pandemic, where many may, might be able to cope with easily, some may endure hardships. As we shift to a new paradigm, <clears throat> adapting to this so-called new normal will largely depend on how prepared we are, especially our graduates. <clears throat> With this, the FEO, the yeah, FEO Career and Placement course. Office, or CAPO, has designed a 15-part series webinar to give the students the basics of working and finding a job against the new normal. We have also prepared and migrated online all other CAPO activities designed to help prepare our graduates for the new world of work. Online mock interview and coaching last July, online exclusive recruitment last August, student exposure to industries this November, to name a few. We shall be posting all this in the official FEU social media sites and canvas, so please check out our event posters and calendars. Now let me show you a short video, uh, video clip of Kapos tie up of activities for the rest of the year. Video please. episode titled 
Career Preparation 101, successfully finding a career in the digital landscape, we are grateful to have an experienced recruitment lead from an IT company that is on one of the top 1,000 corporations in the Philippines who can give us valuable insights on the digital landscape. Through this webinar, we are helping our students and graduates navigate properly and adjust to the new normal world of work. CAPO believes that uh, this topic should be discussed to prepare our graduates and give them a better perspective of the world they are facing, one that is no longer the same as it was a few months back. And while it is not going to be easy to sort out the challenges in this new paradigm that we are in, always remember the mantra, be brave, because Tamarows have always been resilient to whatever comes our way. And now, without further ado, allow me to introduce our speaker. He has 15 years in recruitment and sourcing experience from various multinational and local companies and is currently overseeing the corporate functions entity and cross-entity strategic sourcing for Accenture. Ladies and gentlemen, the talent supply chain and recruitment lead for Accenture, Mr. Ryan Joseph Bison. Hi, sir. Good afternoon and thank you for being here. The screen is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Babes, for that wonderful in introduction. So hi everyone, uh, good afternoon. Um, again, my name is Ryan Dizon, and I'm one of the, the talent supply chain lead, lead leaders of, of, of Accenture. Um, today, I'd like to you know, set also expectations on what you guys will be learning today. Um, I'd like also to, to discuss a topic in terms of successfully finding a career in this digital landscape. And also later on, I'd also like to also give you guys tips on how to, to ace your application process when you apply for a job. And of course, Hopefully, it will also be with Accenture. And at the end of this session, I'd also like to, you know, um, check as well in terms of uh, possible Q and A's that you guys may have, and I'll be gladly uh, answer those um, later after this session. Okay, so moving on to to the next slide. One more slide. There. Okay, so in this slide, I feel like to give a application process. Um, so in, in the olden times or back in the day, um, job seekers would have to chase companies in terms of finding or landing a job. Uh, meaning to say, uh, if you're a job seeker back in the day, you'd have to uh, read through various newspapers, um, search for uh, the different vacancies, the job descriptions, and even the, their uh, locations. And then after that, you'll have to print multiple copies of, of your resume and also have to travel physically to these offices just, just to submit your resume uh, throughout these various uh, companies. Um, this has further evolved. So companies then actually wanted to make it you know, easier and faster for job seekers to also apply and also find their right job for them and this is actually where the birth of the job boards came into play so in terms of job boards as, as you guys may uh may be familiar with this uh, already um this started out in terms of companies posting different vacancies that they have in these job boards uh for job seekers to also view uh potential uh um, jobs that, that that they might be interested to to uh, to apply to um then once you find that um that suitable role you then will still have to submit your resume um, in, in their offices. So again, this had to, again, further evolve. Uh, and this is actually that spark the job boards uh, evolving their business model from merely a job posting to become a full suite recruitment vendor. So mean to say, um, when you apply now through these different job boards, not only will you, you see their vacancies, but you will also uh, be putting in there your your information as well as your uh, updated resume and it will already be sent through the email addresses of the different recruitment teams uh, of the companies that you may have applied for now uh, given the you know the ever changing and competitive landscape as well uh, and growing uh, workforce here here also in in, in the Philippines um, it has further evolved as well in terms of companies also adapting their recruitment portals and also their their websites to link it to the job boards. So mean to say when you guys apply now via job boards, you you, you don't just send your, your your resumes via online, but you already get queued automatically in the process for those jobs that, that you've applied for. 
and and further on um as you guys may know um given you know the the growing popularity of social media uh we have different platforms nowadays we have you know facebook we have linkedin we have twitter we have um tiktok even right um uh, we all and these are all on top of the job boards now as you as you may have seen through the different social media platforms um various companies now are already uh posting out uh, their vacancies and brands in terms of um, job ads uh, in these platforms. So it means to say that comparing this back in the day when job seekers would actually have to chase companies just to find uh, a suitable job. Nowadays, companies are actually bringing the opportunities to the job seekers. Now, what does that mean? Yes, it may mean that uh, it's now easier to apply for a job. Uh, it's now more, it, it's now faster to look for job vacancies. But also, given that it's easier and faster to, to, to search for job vacancies, there are now more candidates that are being processed by, by these different companies, right? And by saying that there are more comp sorry, there are more candidates being processed, it means that there would also be tighter screening processes being in place. So meaning to say it would now be harder as well for someone to, to land a job given the vast majority of job seekers apply for. And later on, I'll also be sharing with you guys tips, you know, in terms of how to really stand out, right? right? Given this uh, digital age uh, that we have at the moment, how to stand out and really be that person that, you know, each company is actually uh, looking for. Now in the next slide. So this also um, adds up to to, you know the Social ever changing plan. landscape that that we have uh, right now so uh, at the moment you know different organizations are globally are experiencing workforce disruptions at unprecedented scale and speed um, what does this mean this means that you know we are now forced to propel our workforce to look for new ways to stay relevant amidst the certain uh, uh sorry the uncertain uh, times right now so this also means that you know uh, for some companies uh, even the CEOs are also faced with overwhelming uh, com competing challenges um, as they continue to, to, to navigate through changing landscape. Um, CEOs right now have prioritized the, the now, uh, meaning to say focusing on supporting their people, their customers, candidates, um, suppliers, and orchestrating responses to, to disruption on all fronts. So meaning to say also in parallel, um, leaders have sought out to stabilize revenue Revenues and take care of customers to reshape their business to align with evolving demand and find new growth pathways as well. Okay, now in the next slide. Now you might be asking, okay, so um, how do companies now recruit for 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 talent, right? So given the changing landscape as discussed earlier, more and more businesses have uh, have since adapted to this next normal. Uh, the go-to recruitment process uh, right now uh, is one of the many other aspects that have shifted significantly within this workforce. Uh, with virtual experiences being the standard, most businesses had bid farewell to many conventional approaches, as you can see here as well in this slide. Um, basically, it's the digital recruitment uh, that's now called as the new normal. So companies um, used to do, you know, uh, below the line advertising, like doing flyering, uh, to get the job placements across to to you know to small range of people. Now uh, job ads are smarter with the use of AI. Now everything can be found in the internet, whether it be a targeted audience or in in a large scale. Um, you know, again, as discussed earlier, back in the day, people would uh, would have to go door to door just to just to just to submit their uh, their resume uh, to potential employers. But now. In this digital age, uh, job seekers can actually easily find job offerings and can submit their application with just a click of a, of a button. So it's really amazing, you know, how how it has changed from I think ten years back. Right now, everything is really digitized. Everything right now is uh, can easily be done, you know, just by using your your mobile phones, even right. So it's actually uh, very important to really have you know online job ads so that companies can reach more aspiring applicants as well. Now, aside from the benefits of reaching wider audience, uh, job portals also help 
employers through the next steps in recruitment process. So meaning to say you might also be experiencing, let's say, interacting with some uh, AI uh, chatbots as well, right? So these chatbots will now would also uh, further guide you guys in terms of uh, getting to know more information about the company, about the role that, that you're applying for, and even the process steps that you are currently part of, right? Now, um, companies uh, nowadays are, are also forced to find new ways uh, in terms of innovating solutions to, be, to really attract the, the talent. You know, through video calls and online assessments, candidates don't need to be physically uh, in the office to apply. Uh, this makes it easier and faster for both the applicants and also the, uh, the, the employers as well. Now, in the next slide, OK, so now let me discuss with you guys, you know, what were the challenges that that we've uh, been facing given this uh, new format, right? So number one, of course, there's less personal interaction between the applicant and the recruiter. Uh, second, there's also higher fallout rate due to technical difficulties. So when I say high fallout rate, um, given that it's a digital uh, type of, uh, of, of application, uh, companies now are receiving uh, more applicants, uh, more ap applicants applying through uh, various roles, and given you know the the online platform that we have right now, um, sometimes it will be difficult to continue an interview if your uh, Wi-Fi is 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 not stable, um, if you would have to do multiple reschedules, uh, if you get caught during the interview. So it's really important you know that when you um, uh, do an interview. Uh, you need to ensure that you also have strong Wi-Fi connection as well. And also I'll be sharing as well, you know, further tips uh, later on. Uh, there's, there's also higher percentage of unresponsiveness and rescheduled application. So this is also, you know, one of the impacts as well of this uh, new norm since that uh, we, we are now receiving um, multiple candidates applying, right? So it also means that there are also multiple um, options for you guys to really choose from, from company A to all the way to company Z. And in and, and those companies, there are, there are various uh, demands uh, available um, suiting your needs as well. So that means that it's more like you guys are, are choosing from, you know, from just not just one company, but really a lot of companies and, and, and also a lot of jobs within those companies as well. Now, what's working? Um, of course, given this uh, digital age, there is faster and more streamlined application process. Um, so that all interviews are now done virtually. So I mean, you don't need to go to the office to, to have your, 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 your interviews done. Um, even the online assessment are also done virtually. Um, online interviews and assessments are actually the, the main priority of the company right now in terms of safety. So that's, so that's why right now at the comfort of your own home, you can even already uh, apply and already get the job offer on that same day, um, just at the same, you know, um, having applied uh, virtually uh, as well. And of course, there's also cost efficient um, uh, for, for both employees and also the recruiters as well. Now, having said this, um, one thing that you guys, I think, would need to also take note as an important um, aspect as well is that this is actually what also differentiates all the other talents in the virtual environment. Um, those that are able to thrive in and and adapt in this uh, you know digital age, despite these challenges mentioned earlier, are the ones that companies are looking for. So basically, the shift in demand and skills are the new currency right now. Okay. Now, in my next slide, right? so I also like to share with you in uh, to also add in in my previous slide. You know, these are the the top ten important skills that that's needed in, in the future right and this comes from the future job survey in, in 2018 uh, world economic forum so number one you need to have analytical thinking and innovation um, active learning and learning strategies creativity originality and initiative technology design and programming critical thinking and analysis complex problem solving leadership and social influence emotional intelligence, reasoning, problem solving, and ideation, and lastly, systems 
analysis and evaluation. So these are the top 10 skills that you need to also um, have as well to really be competitive. But if you'll focus on these uh, top five skills, this is what you need to in order for you guys to actually be able to, to stand out. Now, um, basically the future workforce needs uh, a new breed of talent, right? It's a it's a combo of both a thinker and, and a doer as well. The ability to connect the dots, um, leverage on technology uh, to solve complex business problems will, will, will really become the number one key to success. Uh, and of course, with technology uh, becoming increasingly overpowering, retaining empathy and being humane is also important as well. Now, in my next slide, There. So I'd also now like to give you guys, you know, tips on how to also stand out, you know, during this uh, virtual or, or digital age. So give it again, going back, um, as, as, as discussed earlier, companies now are bringing the opportunities to, to job seekers. And this means that there are now more candidates applying for various roles compared to before. And that means that there would now be tighter processes in terms of candidate selections for the different roles that uh, each company has. Now, <clears throat> those that are able to thrive and, and adapt quickly is actually what actually counts. So if you look at these uh, top five tips that, that, that I have for you, um, it's really important that when you apply for a job, given you know the multiple candidates applying, the, the multiple com uh, com competition as well, it's really important that you guys confirm your, your attendance in advance, right? You, you guys need to show the companies that you are committed to really uh, finish the process, that you're committed to actually join the company and you actually want to learn more about the company as well. Um, number two, uh, it's important to also dial in early uh, in prep for any technical setbacks. You know, we live in a third world country um, um, right now and, um, you know, despite um, uh, applying for the highest MBPS uh, plan, uh, there are there are still disruptions, you know, if, if it if, if it rains, you know, your your wife can actually go down or, you know, so you so you need to also have and ensure that you have a backup plan every time since that when you come up when you are being processed for for interviews, it's important that your line doesn't get cut or you, you don't get rescheduled, right? Um, so it, it's so make, make sure that you guys also focus on and check your internet connect connection. Make sure that, that you also have your, your data as, as backup just in case uh, uh, you would use uh, your question as well. Uh, number four, which is also very important as well, you know, given the virtual setup, um, yes, we might be virtually, um, you know, talking on the phone, but it still plays a big part and it, it, it still um, adds value as well when you look presentable, right? Uh, I mean, to say you need to dress, you, you need to dress to, to impress. Still, since that um, depending on the jobs that, that you'll be applying for, you guys are also um, seen to be the face of the company. So when you go out, when you, when you talk to different mid-level managers or top-level managers or, or even clients, right, the company needs to know that you know how to be presentable and really dress the part. So these are also very important when you guys um, conduct, you know, uh, or undergo your virtual interviews. Make sure that you, you dress up appropriately, um, there's a good background, uh, you don't wear your, your house clothes as well. Um, and lastly, uh, number five, um, make sure you're in a location that's conducive for interview. So meaning to say, make sure that there's also good lighting, right? So it's important right now that, you know, the, your interviewer sees you as well. Um, make sure there's also clean surroundings in, in your background and as much as possible, of course, hopefully there's no noise um, to really disrupt any of your, you know, of, of your in interview sessions as well. So there, so those are my top five uh, tips uh, for you guys to really stand out in this virtual uh, age. Uh, and in my next slide. There, so this time around, so given all those tips and given all those background in terms of, you know, what to expect and, and how to go about this new digital age in terms of applications. Uh, I'd like to invite everyone, you know, to apply here in Accenture. You, you can actually uh, send, us, send us your, your, your CVs at www.accenture.com uh, forward slash PH students uh, uh, PH or use this QR code uh, and you'll be directed to our um, 
uh, portal as well to be processed. So I hope you guys learned a lot and hope I was able to um, share important tips for you guys to be able to be successful. And I'd like to now ask you guys if you guys have any um, uh, questions for me that, that, that I can answer. Go over to you, Nathan. Thank you very much, Sir Ryan Eason, for that very informative talk. I also learned a lot. So right now we're going to be opening or we're going to move on to our question and answer part. So we have one question from our student, Ms. Begasso. So she asks, hi, sir. Good afternoon. My question is regarding to with the online recruitment in the new normal, how do we face it? Or for you, sir, what are the strategies that you can give to them? Any advice regarding online recruitment? Yes, so for online recruitment, again, it's important that you guys stand out, right? So meaning to say when you submit your uh, resume, your your resume needs to be very concise, uh, showing really there, you know, your your skill sets, right? And, and also your 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 interest. So that way, when someone from from recruitment actually reads your resume, they can already um, on the spot check already and see, you know, where your skills are are and, and strengths are at, at, and you know what your interests are. So it's it's important as well that when you uh, apply online again, um, make sure that once that what once you apply through these various companies, uh, make sure that when they reach out to you, you also respond. Um, real time as well as much as possible, because again, as I also mentioned earlier, given the the vast number of applications coming in right now, uh, companies are actually being very selective in terms of hiring. Right, so uh, they look for commitment, they look for dedication as well. So when you apply, it's in, it's important that you also need to also um, um, spend time or, and really put uh, effort in terms of. Uh, making yourself available whenever they, they call you. Thank you, sir. And this one, another interesting question. I think this is very timely as well. Is internet connection a requirement now when applying for a job? I mean, will I be disqualified if we don't have an internet access at home? Um, that's a good question. So the answer is uh, you won't be disqualified, definitely. Um, but yes, it is very important to have internet connection, right? Um, it is important because um, nowadays, uh, when you when you guys apply for for certain jobs, uh, you guys would also be sent uh, invitations to have virtual interviews, right? So this won't really be interviews via phone, but but really you know a face to face interview uh, with a video. Um, there would there would also be um, online assessments that will be sent to your email address. Um, that you'll have to complete as well via email that also requires, you know, internet. But if you don't have internet at, at home, at least, you know, um, use your mobile data as well, since that nowadays um, everything is really digital. Um, so the interviews, um, the exams, and even the job offers are actually done uh, uh, virtually. So yes, it's very important to have, you know, uh, strong internet. But you won't be disqualified uh, if, if you guys get, get cut during the interviews. Um, you will just have to be rescheduled um, uh, to, a, to a later date. But again, the importance of having strong internet is that if you don't get uh, cut or you don't get rescheduled, the uh, chances are that you will be able to complete your process faster than you know the, the other applicants. Mm, I see. And just a follow up on that, sir. Does that mean like, if uh, somebody gets employed, if our graduates gets employed, will they also receive um, an allowance for having an internet connection, like a stable, reliable internet connection, like a budget for that? Budget for that. Budget for um, that. That's, a, that's a good question, um, but that would depend from company to company. Uh, um, I cannot answer for the other companies, but uh, for multinational companies, that, that that's normally given as well. Um, again, it will, it will also depend on the role that you're applying for and also the type of job that, that also you're applying for, right? Uh, if it would, if it would uh, require internet connection to, for, for you to be able to function, then of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. So yeah, I think it's part of the new normal that yes. everyone <laughs> has a connection already. And then another question, sir, would you say, okay, we know that nowadays uh, there's a higher level of competition 
in terms mm-hmm. of actual job application as you were explaining. But would you say that it is rather more difficult to be hired and to stand out today? I mean, just uh, the world process. Yeah, um, actually, I would say that um, yes and no. So, um, yes, it would be uh, much more difficult right now given the competition, right? Since that there would be now uh, more applicants to actually be, be, be screened. But in terms of standing out, I think that's something that, you know, that, that you guys can actually uh, take control of. Uh, again, number one, uh, based on what, what we're currently experiencing r- r- um, right now is that given the volume of applicants um, applying, there are a lot of fallouts, meaning to say people dropping out because they don't have internet connection or they have to reschedule because uh, their background is actually noisy and then they have to check, check on, a, on a different date to also be interviewed again, right? So it's really up to you to really control those those uh, factors and really ensuring that when that once you do get into an interview, you make sure that there will really be no disruptions. There will really be no uh, rescheduling. That way you can actually process your application faster and you get ahead of, you know, your competition. So be ready, right? Yes. And then this one, uh, I think also with the changing digital landscape, there are companies who are now, and even recruitment platforms, who are now accepting video resume and virtual resume. Uh, what mm-hmm. are your thoughts on that? Earlier you were saying that have a concise uh, document of resume, yes. but how about a video resume? Are we accepting uh, that? A video resume, um, I would suggest you submit that if you're applying, let's say, for a job that would that would require video editing, right? Uh, or, you know, graphics, right? But if you're applying for a job that, that won't require any video capabilities, then I would suggest that you make it, you know, as concise as, as possible. Uh, so again, it will really depend on what type of role you're, you're applying for. Um, if you're applying for something that will be doing, you know, uh, people interactions, um, dealing with numbers, then, then I don't suggest doing a video resume. But if you're applying for something that would be, you know, more of a web designer or graphics designer, then probably yes. Okay, thank you. And then this is another question. Uh, how do we, given that everybody's now working from home, there is a question about monitoring whether somebody works. Are we more on output base nowadays? How do we monitor whether someone is really working? What are the policies of companies regarding that? Okay, that's a good question as well. Um, again, it can also uh, depend uh, from company to company um, whether or not companies would actually allow also work from home, depending also on, on, on the job. Um, but in terms of really monitoring, uh, as far as my experience is concerned, right, um, um, results base would, would really outweigh, you know, everything else since uh, we guys are actually being paid for to do a job, right, and to deliver results. So, and that's also one of the key things also that's important when you climb up the corporate ladder. It's really more of really showcasing, you know, what results you have done or have contributed for you to be uh, recognized and also get acknowledged as well. Okay, thank you. And then another question. You mentioned earlier that one of the skills needed in the new normal is technology design and programming. How do I mm-hmm. renew myself for that in my if my course is totally not related to that, but I need sorry, but but I'm interested to learn. Are there any platforms that we can go to and then uh, learn from the, learn from, of those things? Yes, of course. Um, actually, in, in those uh, top skills that, that, uh, that I mentioned, that's just one of them. So you don't have to have all of them, right? But if you have all of them, of course, better, right? Now. Um, um, if you don't have any technology, you know, programming background, then of course there are a lot of uh, different uh, job vacancies as well, uh, within also within Accenture and also in other companies as well, right? Um, not dealing with technology, but if you really want to start or find, uh, uh, further uh, stand out, right? There are, there are different, you know, online um, platforms as well where you can also learn about programming. Uh, they can also, you know. Um, uh, help you also bridge that gap if if you guys would want to go or venture in a technology type of space, right? So here in Accenture, we have technology, we also have uh, operations, and we also have corporate functions. So right, so there are different 
um, roles. Um, so it so tech is one important thing given you know the ever changing needs of technology, right? But it doesn't really mean that it's an end all be all, right? So it's one of uh, an important skills to have. Uh, um, but if you have you know the others like innovation, analytics, um, active learning, creativity, critical thinking, those are also very very important skills to have to also be recognized and also stand out. Okay. Thank you, sir. And then this one is well, always. It's always asked, uh, how about applying for a company? Which one weighs more, skills or academic grades? I think there's there's still this uh, stigma about kailangan mataas ang grade para. Mm -hmm. The grades, yeah. Well, of course, grades are are important, of of course, right? Um, because that will actually be your your uh, your uh, your base, right? Um, in terms of skills, um. It, I would say there would be um, again the the new um, approach is actually having to find someone that's both a thinker and also a, a doer, right? So yes, grades are important, but it also but it's also important to also showcase how you can also um, showcase your skills during the interviews. Showing your commitment is is also on top of the grades, right? So I guess the answer there is that it's important to have both. Uh, I don't think that you know one would weigh another. Both would actually complement each other to really be successful. Thank you. Being the talent recruitment lead for Accenture, are there any insider tips that our FU graduates have to keep in mind as they apply today? Like any today? Yes. Yes. Um, insider tips. Sure. Uh, we have our site. It's actually in the slide. Um, careers that, 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 sorry, careers that .com. So you can actually see there the the, the multiple uh, vacancies that that we currently have. So I would also suggest that you guys visit our, our page as well to know more about the company, to know more about the different jobs that we have. To also see their job descriptions and also see as well, you know, what would um, spark your interest in terms of your current skills, right? And where you where you guys can see yourselves to be also successful. Um, and of course, going back as well to you know my, my 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 earlier slides, right? So in Accenture, we are looking for the the best talents always, right? So it's it's a combo of both your educational background and also your soft skills as well in terms of your commitment as well, right? So it's combining those those two um, and really showing us you know that you're really committed because because again. again we look for your, uh, hiring the best talents, and if you are those people, then we would, you know, gladly embrace you in, in our company. Thank you, thank you so much. You're Sergeant. welcome. So thank you guys as well for your questions. I'm afraid we have run out of time. So our guest speaker gave an overview of how job application processes have evolved. And now because of the ever-changing technology, every company is now posting their vacancies to various social media platforms. Therefore, it is easier and faster to search for job vacancies. However, the challenge though is that there will be a lot higher level of Are competition. Nevertheless, our speaker in the next also slide. gave us valuable tips on how to stand out. Remember, everything nowadays is digitized and you can even be recruited even not needing to be physically present in the office that you're applying in. So to prepare for employment in this new digital landscape, make sure you have a reliable connection and are technology able. Once you have that hardware aspect ready, then focus. the next focus will be on you. So earlier, the skills needed were also mentioned. So reflect on that and see whether you possess those skills or think of ways how you can develop those. Remember to stand out, make sure you show your interest in the company, be committed, do your research, be ready in terms of attitude and being resilient. Resume is also very important, so prepare for that aspect as well. So the bottom line of out of all of this is to be ready and be and research on your desired applica job application. Nothing can go wrong when you are prepared and are aware, especially in this new digital landscape. There you have it, and that concludes our pep talk for today. And in behalf of the FEU Career and Placement Office, we would like to thank Mr. Ryan Joseph Bison for his precious time, and also to our students, faculty members, and employees for joining us. We do hope that you have learned a lot from this webinar, and I hope that you will join us again in our future pep talk episode. Our next topic is preparing for the new work setup. 
getting the right appearance, attitude, and interview skills with Ms. Maridel Tremblay, the CEO of JobStream. That will be on October 28, 2020, Wednesday. Just check the career and placement of Office Facebook page from time to time for updates. And as we end, may we invite everyone to join us in singing the FEU hymn.